Hello, this is Dan from HDP Supply, and today I'm just going to show you a little bit about the Ritmo Ram 14 butt fusion machine and how it works. Um, the machine itself has a steel carriage. It's capable of fusing 1 inch IPS through 5 inch IPS HDPE pipe. It can also be used to fuse polyethylene, or excuse me, polypropylene pipe as well. Uh, the machine itself has two cast aluminum jaws. And in each of these jaws, the steel ribbed inserts lock into it. So each jaw has four half shells that lock into, into each side set. Um, the, the jaws are easily removable with no tools. It has a pin that unscrews a couple turns and the jaws come out. And then you just tighten this pin back up and it locks this, these jaws in so they can't come out. Um, to install your pipe, you want to leave the pipes about an inch out from the face of the clamp. And tighten them in snug, but you don't want to really bear down on clamps because you could cause the pipe to become out of round by, I guess, crushing the pipe. So what I do is I kind of put a, I mean, reasonably tight. The machine itself has a spring-loaded carrier that helps it keep contact during the fusion process. Um, right now I'm going to do the first step of the process which is facing the pipe. The pipe facer is an electric facer, locks into the main carriage. Once it's in the main carriage you'll want to turn the facer on. What I did there is I brought the two pipes together and faced them until the facer stops hit the carrier where it can't go any further. We'll open the jaws up, pull the facer out, set it back on the facer stand. Pipe has been faced, um, the facer's removed, put it back on the stand, and you want to bring the pipes up to one another and verify that they are in perfect alignment as if they were one pipe. There's no gaps and they are smooth if you run your finger across the joint. So now that we know that that is in, in alignment, we'll go on to the heating phase. Now we're going to move on to the heating cycle of this pipe. Um, this here is the heating plate. Currently it's set at 424 degrees Fahrenheit. The, this Ritmo machine is equip, equipped with a, what's called a digital dragon. It's a digital temperature thermostat on it. It allows you to adjust the temperature in two degree increments. It's displaying 424 degrees Fahrenheit on the screen right now. And this machine also has an analog temperature gauge in the heating plate itself so you can verify that your temperature is indeed at the correct fusion temperature. For this pipe, this is 3 inch IPS SDR11. And right now I'm going to start the fusion. Um, this is done using a manual, or excuse me, a visual melt bead. Uh, method where I'm going to watch the melt bead form um, on the edge of e this heating plate on each side. Uh, for this particular pipe, the minimum melt bead side during the heating heating cycle is one sixteenth of an inch. Um, you can go a little bit bigger than that, but right now that's about what I'm going to shoot for. Maybe a little bit on the high side, maybe three thirty seconds of an inch. So, place the heating heating plate on the fusion machine and pull the pipe up to the heating plate. You want to apply a little bit of pressure at first and then you want to relax. You just want to make sure that the pipes stay in contact with very little pressure if any. Um, you just don't want to have negative pressure against that heating plate while this melt bead forms. So I'm going to watch this melt bead form. I can see inside between these clamps that the bead itself is starting to build. And again I'm going to be watching for a 1 16th of an inch melt bead for this particular size pipe. Other pipes require different, um, different melt bead sizes, so you want to check your manual and make sure you're using the right melt bead for the pipe you're using. Right now it's a, almost a sixteenth of an inch, 
so it's probably got about another 30 seconds to a minute of heating time before I can open these jaws, remove the plate, and then inspect the melt beads. So we'll get to that in just a minute. One thing to note real quick is this machine has a stop gauge on it that is industry exclusive. You can set this gauge, this cam here, so that the gap um, between this part and this is my approximate final melt bead size once I pull these pipes together during the fuse. And so right now I have it set at just less than three eighths of an inch for this size pipe. And when I do the fusion, I'm gonna pull these two, pull this shut until these two plates hit each other and that's the stop and I'm going to hold pressure at that point in time. Right now my melt bead has gotten to the size I'd like. I'm going to open the jaw, remove this heating plate, set it in the stand, and then I'm going to close this and apply the pressure. And I've applied the pressure up to the point where that cam for that stop is touching so that I know my bead width is going to be the right right amount. I'm going to hold pressure on here for a minute or so and then I'm just going to keep some fairly decent pressure on it while I'm waiting for the the pipe to start cooling down. You want to reference your manual to determine how long you're going to wait before you can remove this pipe from the jaws. So right now I've been holding this for roughly about eight minutes. The recommended fuse cool time for this pipe is eight minutes and 37 seconds. Um, now I can release pressure, I can open the jaws, and remove the pipe. So on this pipe, here's the final double rollback melt bead, and this width was determined by the, the distance I set in this stop, and also follows the the recommended melt bead width that's recommended in the manual. At this point, um, once you've waited the, the, the cooling time, you can remove this from your jaws and you'll want to let it cool completely before you pressure test or move the pipe in any way that you'd be put straining this joint. Um, for this particular pipe, you're probably looking at around 20 minutes. Um, at that point in time, you can do what you want with it. You're, you're never going to wreck this joint. Um, that's basically it. If you have any questions, you can always call or email us. And we're more than happy to help you uh, find what machine is going to be right for your application. Thank you.